right, so if we can all take our seats, and I think we have, I would like to officially welcome you to Gray Academy of Jewish Education's Convocation 2020. I want to welcome all of our guests who are here in person for the first half of our convocation. We will be welcoming a new set of guests in the second half. And I also want to welcome all of our guests watching live from what I understand is all over the world. And so if you are watching live to all of our guests, and I'll probably repeat this in case we have some latecomers, we hope you send us a little message in the chat feature just to wish our class Mazel Tov. So a few housekeeping items before we begin. Um, once you send all of your messages, we're going to ask you to make sure that your devices are silenced. In order to come together today, we are following all of Manitoba's public health guidelines. And as such, we are seated in this very unique way so that you are in household groupings. We do have washrooms inside and they are available to you should you need. Also, we have a hydration station at the back. We want to keep you hydrated throughout. Um, we ask you to please not move your seats during the ceremony. Um, and also that when we exit, there's going to be a certain set of instructions so that we can make sure the second group can arrive somewhat following your departure. If you are finding it hot outside, we do have our wellness room inside, which will have the live feed going should you need to cool off. We wanted to be prepared for all scenarios. I want to welcome our official photographer, Robin Shapiro, who has been taking pictures from this morning on and has the challenge of doing so with a bit of distance. And also our director of marketing and communications, Andrea Ritter, who's going to be doing a little bit of social media posting throughout and also taking photos. When your child is honored, we will allow one family member to be able to come into this beautiful orange hula hoop designated for you to take a photo, but rest assured we have our official photographer who will be taking at least three photos to make sure to get a good one without blinking um, so that everybody has a photo. So with that, I don't want to go any further until our most honored guests are here. I want to thank Shayla Fink, who is on keyboard today with us, and we will begin with our processional of the graduating class of 2020. Cue the music. Oh, just need a little power on the keyboard. <laughs> is loud. official welcome to the graduating class of 2020. I have to say we were all about business until they walked in. That got me a bit emotional. Welcome to our graduates. This celebration is for you. And this one is certainly unique. All Gray Academy graduates and graduation ceremonies are always special. 
this one has a particular uniqueness in that we are under the sky. We've been Grey Academy, we've been Grey Away, we're now Grey Academy under the sky. And I think there's something beautiful in that we were able to make it to this point together, that we were able to be together, to celebrate our graduates, to be together under the sky. And it harkens back to the first day of Pesach break. We were eight days into being virtual and a post by Mrs. Botch for her grade nine science class in the evening to look up in the sky to watch a very specific phenomena that was happening that evening. And Mrs. Botch, who's here tonight, wrote, even though we are separated, we are all together under the same sky. And there's something beautiful about our graduates, the time we spent with them in what was absolutely not how they envisioned ending their graduation year. But these last few months, each of you walked through these months with sheer grace, with gratitude, with resiliency, and with an amazing amount of patience to hold off until it was safe for us to be together. And here we are today. So I thank you all for being here. I want to thank Mrs. White for giving me the honor and privilege to lead our convocation. This is certainly a special moment and a chance for us to recognize all of our graduates. When we turn to the second half, we hope that you continue watching live or at least watch the recording later to have a chance to hear about each and every one of our graduates. To set the tone, we are going to invite Hannah Garber and Maya Polavoy, and your prayers are under your seats, to come up for your prayers. You're gonna be given a mic, and I'm just gonna move the stand, you guys will hold your mic. Elohenu velohe abatenu vimatenu, and Achnun dim al saps with Bacha the Shabachain. Tenchenu la tova vela bracha, la sason vela simcha, la fermasa vela calcala, vela yeshua vela etgal, la ipuk vela mechama, tencha linsoa et hanishiut shabano, ten lano et yolot la chazek et atzmenu, mishpachtenu, la chavarenu, vela saret et ki helatenu bekavod. Tir el lano drachim la tikunolam. Tinchenu la chaim vela shalom. Shanakir Bechasuruniot, ten lano, Koach lit moded im, Shifotenu, Lemadnu, Tat Lusneach Latsmenu, Velacharim, Eloheinu, Atali Madata Utanu lakir, et Hilufe Hazman, ten lano lakir, Bamad Hazen, Kishaat Kosher la Riach et Haenu. Tavot Kufa Hazot Alenu, Val Kol am Beit Israel, Tova, Velabracha, Velomar, Amen. Our God and God of our fathers and mothers, we are at the threshold of a new period in our lives. Direct us towards goodness and blessing, towards gladness and joy, towards livelihood and sustenance, towards liberation and challenge, towards patience and consolation. Direct us to find the humanity within us. Give us the capability to support ourselves, our families, and our friends, and to serve our community in dignity. Show us ways to tikkun olam. Direct us towards life and peace, that we may be aware of our shortcomings. Give us strength to struggle with our aspirations. Teach us how to forgive ourselves and others. Our God, you have taught us to be aware of the changes in time. Let us regard this moment as an opportunity to elevate our lives. May this period come to us and your entire people Israel for goodness and for blessing. And let us say, Amen. <laughs> to set the tone further, I would like to invite our Judaic Studies Advisor, Dr. Ashrafi, to share her Dvar Torah.
it works. It's good to see all of you here. So let's dive right into it. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is it that after 12 to 15 years of studying hard at school and looking forward to a well-deserved graduation, COVID hits, throws the country into lockdown and your plans out the window? What does Judaism have to say about life's curveballs and the best way of dealing with them? First, here is the explanation with which the rabbis do not agree. In the Talmud, Rabbi Yochanan states that if a person is overcome by a sudden illness or hardship, he should accept it as yesurim shel ahava, or punishment out of love. God is using the suffering to teach you something. Well, three pages down, Rabbi Yochanan becomes sick himself, and his students ask, how do you feel? I do not like the suffering, nor the lesson it is supposed to teach, he answers. Well, at least he's honest. So here is why that theory does not work. Curveballs are random. Why should you, the class of 2020, need to learn a lesson? And what about the previous classes? Why should this person experience illness and that person not? The second rabbinic explanation focuses on the randomness of suffering. If all our actions were always followed by their just reward, no exceptions, what would that mean? Most of us would quickly learn that if we do good things, we receive good in return. Our lives will become a balanced accounting book, ensure that you always have more credit than debit. But if there is randomness in the system, we cannot always be certain of the result of our actions. If we are suddenly hit by something that we could not possibly have seen coming or could have prevented, by something that overturns all our plans, then the question becomes, how are we going to respond to the challenge that hit us? If we get thrown a curveball, it is okay to feel upset because it does, because it hurts. It is really okay. Would we keep doing good even if we may not get the result we want? Or should we do good because it is the right thing to do? Judaism acknowledges that the randomness of curveballs is no easy matter at all but it teaches us to focus on our choice of response. We can keep doing the right thing because it is the right thing to do. So, if COVID prevents us from having a regular convocation ceremony, we'll organize a different one, but we will have a convocation ceremony. And Mrs. White will figure out that dinner and dance too. Look at Israel. We learned to grow watermelons in the desert, revive the language, and are now the second country with the most startups on the NASDAQ in New York. And all this while under constant threats from our enemies. Despite the curveballs, you will continue to do good. You will go after your dreams because that is the right thing to do. That is one of the values that you learned at Gray Academy. I want to congratulate all of you with a huge Mazal Tov. I wish you and your families lots of bracha and hetzlacha and kol tuv. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, we've got a little bit of choreography with our uh, microphones and many different microphones. And I want to thank the sound guy and uh, Dr. Ashrafi. If I can have my notes back, <laughs> I can continue. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I still seem to be missing my notes. So if somebody has my notes, Dr. Shafi, are you sure you don't? Any of our prayers? <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. So now is the time to welcome some special guests here this morning. Representing the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education, the board that has been overseeing Jewish education in our community for the past almost 40 years. We're getting close to celebrating 40 years uh, since 1980, so we're declaring 2021 as the celebration of our 40 years. I would like to welcome Sean Shore, President. Please stand and be noted who is here representing the board. And to any of our board members who may be watching live, we thank you. Um, it is our board that supports the continuity and future of Jewish education in our community. And I want to thank Sean for He's just about to conclude five years of dedication to the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education this November. I want to thank him for that dedication and also let you know that there is a letter inside the program from him 
uh, to you, to all of our guests. Also here today representing the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg is past president, Laurel Malkin. Laurel, if you can stand so we can welcome you officially. <laughs> Laurel is here representing the Federation. And as we continue to note in so much of our messaging, the gratitude to the contributions we receive through the community and the combined Jewish appeal with the allocation allows us to continue to make sure that Jewish day school education is affordable and accessible, and we are continuously grateful to the Federation. And we thank you, Laurel, for representing the giant board and um, for being here with us. In your program, uh, you will find a letter from Joel Laser, uh, the current president, and I hope you will take a chance later on to read that. Someone uh, out there live is gonna be watching from the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba with where our endowment is housed. Uh, the Gray Academy Endowment, our debating endowment, and so many of our awards. Uh, we don't have anyone here live with us today, but you will find a letter in your program from the current president, Richard Yaffe, <clears throat> on behalf of the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba. So we thank the Jewish Foundation for their contributions to our ceremony. Generally at our convocation, we have hundreds of guests. We have many people who are our special guests who are with us because they are connected to an award, they establish an award, they give out the award. Uh, but this year is unique and they were not able to be with us in person. Uh, we have invited all of them to watch live and to those of you who are watching live, and I do know we have one or two people during our first and second um, time together that are here connected to awards and we do thank you for being here. It is because of those presenters and because of those individuals and families that we have so many awards in which to honor our graduates. I would like to now honor our parents, and if you are a parent of a graduate, if you could please stand. As you stand and are honored, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for choosing Gray Academy for your children. I want to thank you for your partnership, whether your partnership has spanned 14 years, 15 years, or maybe seven. We are partners with our families and with our parents, and I don't think that any time other than these last few months was that even clearer um, to all of us. And I want to thank you all, and I want to wish you all Mazel Tov, and for your patience along the journey for waiting until July 12th to celebrate the graduating class. So thank you to our parents. And unfortunately, we couldn't have all of our staff and our teachers here, but we have many. So if you're wearing two hats, uh, or if you are an educator or a staff member, if you could please stand. I would like all of our teachers to please stand. I'm watching, Mr. Kagan, that's you too, I'm watching. <laughs> um, yes, that's you. Each and every day, it is the work of our teachers and our staff that contribute to the experience that our students have at Gray Academy. And I also wanna point out these last few months, the hard work and dedication for being committed to our core values of community connectivity and taking care of our students over the last number of months. And we're glad to have so many of you here present. And to all of you watching live, we thank you with the deepest of gratitude. So with that, I get to turn the mic over to Mrs. White. And I want to uh, remark and thank her before she comes up because we are here because of all of the thousands of steps and the commitment that she had even during the pandemic when we were in gray away to make sure each and everything that we planned in the normal time was planned. I can tell you <laughs> this tent is up, the microphones are here and all of the details that lead up to today is because of Mrs. White's commitment to our graduates. I'll say more later on and I'm gonna take my notes with me this time. I've learned my lesson. So Mrs. White, I will flip my microphone and allow you COVID protocols. All right. <clears throat> Isn't this beautiful? Thank you. I did, thank you. This is awesome. I did send a text to see if we get the sun dialed down just a smidge for those of you on the edges, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it will happen in time, but we try to 
provide as much shade as we could, a little bit of a breeze. Um, this is a very special graduation for a very special group of grads. So the principal speech. I'm up here thinking that whatever I need to say needs to be a little bit insightful, maybe a little bit humorous. Um, it's standard practice to start with a catchy quote and to build your speech around that catchy quote. Um, I don't think I'm going to follow that structure this year. Nothing this year followed a typical structure. I'm sure that you would agree it's been an intense couple of months, but we are together today, finally. The class of 2020 made it very clear that it was important for them to have a celebration live where they could have family members and their peers beside them. When we're preparing for graduation, Staff and special guests are divided into groups and they look at the award applications and they utilize rubrics uh, to allocate certain awards. But there are a number of awards that are done a bit differently. And those awards are done, the staff will sit all together and the staff will share anecdotes and stories about each and every graduate and this year, I wish I could have recorded those conversations for you. Because what I heard were a lot of staff going, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that, as they were learning so much about this grad class. What came out loud and clear from these conversations is that you're not a group that shouts from the rooftops. You're not a group that finds a cause and leads it from the front. Your heart is much more subtle and meaningful. Even when you wrote about yourselves in your bios, I was surprised at how much was missing. You want to know what was missing? Some awards, some different initiatives that they've done or ways that they've helped out their peers. But that's who they are. How they've affected others is very subtle and genuine. I want everybody in here to know about you. I want you also to know that we see you. We see you when you're reaching out to the younger students in the halls or in 204, making them feel special. We see you when you're saying hello to that student in the hall who is alone. We see you asking for help when a friend needs help. We see you choosing positive choices and even when those positive choices are not necessarily the easy ones. We see you supporting one another even when you've been hurt You've still been there for somebody else. We see you taking a stand for what's right. We see you being proud of your uniqueness and your individuality, which in turn makes you the best role models for our younger students in the school. There is no doubt in my mind that you will blaze a path that is your own, no one else's, your own. You are all very strong. You have a strong sense of self. You know who you are. You are strong in your convictions. And you have a big heart. We are so very proud of each and every one of you. Congratulations. I would like to take a moment for a few thank yous. First, to some of our parent volunteers. To Joan Marks for planning the progressive dinner down to the last details. All that was left to do was hit play. To Hadass Eviatar, who was my right hand as we started our fundraising. And every few weeks I would get an email from Hadass asking if there's any way that she could lend a hand. 
Susan Buckwald, who started planning for our grad Shabbat and convocation. Rachel Margulis, who helped with some of the festivities for today's event. Thank you. A huge shout out to our biography writers, Ron Vanderhoeft, Heidi Crowley, Lindsay, Lindsay Leipzig, Nicole Bosch, and Andrew Kaplan. And finally, today would not have happened without the countless hours of Lori Binder and Joyce Kerr. It is mind blowing how much they get accomplished within a day. We thank you for ensuring that today was going to be special for everybody. Thank you, Tracy. Getting teary. This is getting exciting. OK. We get to turn our attention to the voices of our students through the valedictory addresses. And each year at Gray Academy, we have a valedictorian selection process. And I think about it was maybe seven or eight years ago that we changed our process to allow all students to come forward, to put themselves um, forward to say they were interested. But this process includes a selection with staff and with peers. So I'm gonna invite Jenna Buckwald and Mitchell Margulis to get ready with their microphones. We're gonna start with Jenna, just to come up because we get to get our microphones ready. Um, we are always honored to be able to have a valedictorian address in Hebrew, and that will be followed by Mitchell Margulis in English. I'm not gonna come up between them. Um, I look forward to hearing their words in celebration of their peers and the graduating class of 2020. So we're gonna start with our Hebrew valedictorian, Jenna, once I come down, and that will be followed by Mitchell. And also to let you all know, and everybody watching live, we will be doing this twice, so that our guests who come in the second half are able to also hear the valedictorian speeches authentically in person. Gavarit Binder, Dr. Ashrafi, Gavarit White, Hamora Joyce, Morim, Mishpachot, Vichaverim. Ruchim Habaim, Leteka Siyum, Shalkita Al Pine Beasrim. Kshani Kotevet Edhana Um Haze, Aniloyo Dat Imikraze, Mul Auditorium, Amus Bakol, Beneha Mishpacha, Vichaverim Shalanu, Kizaboku Lam Yoshim, Bemerchak, Shalshisha Metarim Zemaze, O Stam Koreditze, Bakol Ram Bizum. Shanifnas knew the Beit Hasefer by September, Lashanat Halimudim, Haafrana, Shalanu Betichon, Loyachal knew the Damien, Shalona Kabel, Edahiz Damnut, La Soda at Mishak Hasport Hacharon Shalanu, at Festival Ashirim Hacharon Shalanu, at Seder Hapesach Hacharon Shalanu, the Etamine Haafranim, Lachagi Gata Tichon. Tochniot, Covid nineteen, Hasior Hakol, the Hayenu Tuchim Le Kabel, Shahal Lamisha Ne Lenetza. The Mesha Hachodashim Haafranim, Avarno Milhis Dakel, Al Kirot, Beit Has Shefer, Shahit Raganu Kol Kachlirot, Bemala, Arbaasre Hashanim Haafranot, Lilhis Dakel, Al Kirot, Cheder Hashena Shalanu Bimkom. Achbeota, Derek Shuba, Grey Academy, Tamid Haita Sham Avarenu, Hemshu Patslichu, the Histagel Kol Kach Meher, Belev Sharlanu Lehaslim, Ed Chachenu Haafranim, Betsora Kala, the Chalka Kakal Haafshar. Lemarenu Vilaharenu Ha Nehedirim. Lo hainu kan hayom bli kol havadah hakasha hamsirat vhasalvanut shalachem. Toda mikol halav shavatama tanu l'shalav hachashuv hazeh b'chayinu. Gray Academy tamid hayta yoter misdam beit sefer avarinu. Zot tamid hayta mishpacha. Hatsevet hu be'emet echad mesogo. Lo rakshatah hamarim shalanu 
אלא שאתה גם המנטורים והחברים שלנו. תודה שהשמעתם תמיד שעות נוספות שעזרו לנו בכל מה שאנחנו צריכים ועל כך שהשקעתם בנו כל כך. תודה שהייתם תמיד שם בשבילנו ודאגתם לנו גם בחיי בית הספר ומחוץ. לא היינו יכולים לעשות את זה בלעדיכם. באיזה בית ספר אחר היו המורים קנים שלושים לכל הכיתה, זורקים מסיבת פוטלק ללא סיבה, יוצאים לארוחת צהריים לקנות לכולם מתנה בהתאמה אישית, מבקשים מכם לשיר שיר שכתבתם למחנה מקהלה, או מזמינים את המשלחת לבית שלהם לצפות ברגעים נבחרים מהטיול שלכם. כל יום היו זיכרונות חדשים כמו אלו, שאני יודעת שהכיתה שלנו לעולם לא תשכח, ותמיד תהיה אסירי תודה עליהם. אנו כל כך אסירי תודה על כל מה שבית הספר הזה נתן לנו. הודות לחוויות שלנו בריטריטים ושבתונים, יש לנו הערכה חזקה לתפילה, ויש לנו את היכולת להיפלל עם כוונה בסידור, לקרוא מהתורה ולהוביל טקסים שונים. למדנו בתרופות על מורשתנו, שושנו ולקחים מהעבר, דרך לימוד ההיסטוריה היהודית והשואה. יש לנו הבנה ידי הטוב של עברית, ושמענו נועים ומובילי קהילה שונים. P2G הציע לנו את ההזדמנות לפתח אהבה וחיבור חזק לישראל, ולאפשר לנו ליצור זיכרונות וחברתיות מתמשכות. אנו יודעים שתמיד נעשה את זה, הערכים שלמנו איתנו לשלב הבא בחיינו. כשאני עומדת כאן ומייצגת את הכיתה של 2020, תמיד נזכור את החשיבות של שמירה על המסורת היהודיות שלנו. אמנם למיסה שלנו בגרי אקדמי היו תגמולים ואתרגים, וכל זאת הפכנו למנהיגים ומודילים לחיקוי בעתיד. אני יודעת שנמשיך לשב בחיינו את הערכים והמסורת הללו. למרות שבלתי חלק ניכר מחיי בלימודים מחוץ לתוכניות הרגילה, כמו בריקוד ובתיאטרון מוזיקלי מחוץ לבית הספר, אני אסיר את הדעה על כל ההזדמנויות הנוספות שהעניק לי בית הספר. החל מהתפקידים הראשיים, במחזות זמר של בית הספר, ועד לכיתה, ובעצוע של שירים מקוריים, משלי לכל פסטיבלי השירים, נהניתי מאוד להיות מסוגלת להשתתף באופן פעיל, כל כך בתוכניות בית הספר האלה. זה באמת שיפר את חוויות הגרי אקדמי שלי, ונתן לי כל כך הרבה זיכרונות, שלעולם לא ישכח. לכל חבר'ה כיתתני יודני שנצטער להיפרד אחד מהשני בשלב מסוים לפני שנלך בדרכינו הנפרדות, אך מי היה מאמן שנעשה זאת במרץ. תמיד היינו כיתה עם הרבה חוויות ממקור ראשון. הראשונה היא להיות שלוש כיתות בסודי, הראשונה ללבוש תלבוש את החידה מאז כיתה א', וכעת אנו מוכירים ככיתה עם חוויות הסיום הייחודית ביותר אי פעם. למרות כל המכישולים והשינויים העומדים בפנינו, איננו מתכוונים לתת לכך להרתיע אותנו. אנחנו, הכיתה של 2020 חזקים, ואז רק חיזק אותנו. העולם עשוי להשתנות לנצח, אך עתידנו עדיין מואר, ואנחנו ללא ספק עדיין נשיג את המטרות שלנו, ונהיה מנהיגים עתידים. עשינו את זה. אני מאחלת לכולם מזל טוב ביוזמתכם העתידיות. תודה. Can everybody hear me? Cool. Thank you to everyone who is joining us here today. Thank you to Ms. Binder, Mrs. White, the administration, and everyone who helped make today possible. I know I speak for everyone when I say how much we appreciate being able to do this. I feel like it was just yesterday that a young boy walked through the elementary doors with a kippa on his head and a bag full of dreams. Some of those dreams included playing basketball at Duke University, and some of those dreams never came to fruition. Little did he know the level of growth he would experience between those walls and the countless relationships he would form along the way. That boy was me. 
Hello everyone. My name is Mitchell Margulis and I was given the opportunity to address the Gray Academy class of 2020. And standing here today, I can't help but feel the same emotions I felt in junior kindergarten, having never gone to school before. Nervousness, severe sweating, and mild nausea. I want to make it clear that these are symptoms of stage fright and there is nothing to worry about. While writing this speech, I have struggled to put our high school career into words. There are so many people and moments that have allowed us to reach this day. If Miss Bosch and Mr. Hamill never told me to take math seriously, who knows if I would have had the marks to even be considered for this position. But what I have been doing is thinking about the Gray Academy class of 2020, a cohort of fearless young adults ready to take on whatever the world has to offer, unless that is a global pandemic, of course. While this isn't how we imagined it, we are so glad to be here with everyone that the province has allowed. To those joining us via the World Wide Web, we salute you in these times of uncertainty. We love you and can't wait to celebrate in person. Our journey at Gray Academy has gone faster than any of us could have imagined. Some of us started going to school here from the very beginning. Some of us joined later on, and some even left and came back. But all 23 of us share something unique, our love for Gray Academy. One of my fondest memories of the Academy was our imaginary trip to Israel in grade three. It felt like a never ending journey of fun due to the fact that we technically have never returned. And because international travel is prohibited, we have decided as a graduating class to partake on an imaginary grad trip, solving both the problems of cost and our parents' trust. But in all seriousness, Gray Academy has provided us with so much, especially when it comes to opportunity. No matter if you love sports, art, debating, technology, or mama lotion, there is something for everyone. It's what our school does best. Gray Academy is a place where you can truly be yourself, and it's something that is unique to our school. And we have a pool. You see, throughout my extensive preparation for this speech, I found a pattern. Almost every valedictorian made some sort of comparison to their grade. So as an exercise, I decided to relate every example I heard to the Gray Academy class of 2020 just to see if anything would click. The first speech I heard compared their graduating class to the film High School Musical. She compared her classmates to characters in the movie and concluded that together they form a beautiful, harmonious choir. This may have been true of her graduating class, but with the exception of Jenna Buckwald and Nicola Renzen, our grade is entirely devoid of musical ability. The next speech I heard made a comparison to a book. He talked about how his classmates are moving on to the next chapter in their lives and that at the end of the day, we move forward. But why read books when there are perfectly good summaries online? Overall, what I learned is that you can't compare the class of 2020 to anything. We are living in a time unlike any other. And despite what's going on in the world, I genuinely believe that we will come out of it stronger and closer than ever. Speaking of craziness, high school was quite the ride. I wouldn't say we matured, but we did become more self-aware of our immaturity. We learn that our schmoozers accounts are in fact not endless streams of money. And we learn that when we leave the lounge a literal garbage dump, mold begins to form. Unhealthy habits aside, we grew closer as a grade and created memories that will last a lifetime through Shabbatons, P2G, Case, and many more. But none of these programs would have ever been possible without the teachers who have helped us become the young learners we are today. For the hours of extra help and years of helping us understand not only the fundamental lessons of the class, but in life, we thank you. You are credited not only with our knowledge, but our character as well. Whether it's discussing fantasy football, reality shows, or the intro to living on a prayer, which is, oh, whoa, whoa, by the way, we appreciate everything you do for us. You have mentored and guided us through our biggest ups and downs, and most importantly, you cared for us. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the CEOs of SparkNotes, CliffNotes, PhotoMath, <laughs> Quizlet, and Khan Academy for helping us get through these last few years. You were there for us in times of need, and we are forever in your debt. While Googling what a great valedictorian speech sounds like, oftentimes it read, provide the graduates with wisdom. I think it's important for me to do this, because who doesn't want to hear wisdom from a young, inexperienced 18-year-old? But believe it or not, these past 18 years have taught me a few things. To the class of 2020, hey guys, we made it. I think it's fair to say that these past few months haven't been easy on everyone. And what I've ultimately learned is that growing up sucks. It really does. 
But over the next few years, it's what we'll do. Some of us will move away and some of us will stay right here. Regardless of that, I genuinely hope that we stay in touch and stay close. The Gray Academy experience is not bound by the physical campus, but by the unbreakable bonds that we share with both our peers, teachers, and community. I know for a fact that wherever life takes us, our school will remain by our side, and there will always be time with the boys. I think it's also, to under um, I think it's also important to understand um, that we should never stop fighting for what we believe is right, just like Max Kaplan's valiant effort in never wearing his uniform, to which Mr. Vanderhoof swiftly settled. I guess what I'm trying to say is that in life, do not conform to any expectations or boundaries. You don't have to be a lawyer, doctor, or corporate manager to be successful. Find that thing that makes you happy and double down. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, which is why I have decided to drop out of university to pursue a career in magic. And for my first trick, I will be concluding the speech. There is no doubt that moving on from Gray Academy won't be easy. But with it, there will be countless memories and relationships formed. All I ask is that you remember where you came from. To quote the Disney film Up, enjoy the little things in life. For one day, you'll look back and realize that they were the big things. Thank you all for listening, and mazel tov to the Gray Academy class of 2020. Thank you, Jenna, and thank you, Mitchell, for those wonderful words. And if you didn't notice, in your program, there is a translation of the Hebrew speech, should you wish to read it if you weren't already watching uh, or reading along with them. I just want to remind the graduates that under your chair, there's a little bag so that you stay hydrated as well, as, and a fan if you want to cool yourself off. So please uh, help yourself to that so that you can be good for the next hour and a half, at least, that we're going to be together, not just with this group. So we're on to the diplomas and the awards. And I think what makes Gray Academy's graduation unique is that we have a chance to honor each and every graduate, not simply because they are receiving their diplomas, the Manitoba Education Diploma and the Gray Academy of Jewish Education Diploma, but because each and every one of the students, as both Jenna and Mitchell have remarked, have contributed, have grown, have uniqueness. And sh in a moment, Mrs. White is going to come up and we'll be reading those bios. What will happen with this diploma is each of our graduates, at least the first half up until Rudy Kissel, will officially become graduates and officially become alum. And so if you are an alum of Gray Academy or any of its founding schools, Joseph Linsky Collegiate, please rise so we can recognize our alum and so all of our graduates can see who they will be joining. So don't be shy, because I can see you. If you are an alum, please, please rise. OK. Wonderful. And once again, I want to thank all of the individuals that are attached to the many uh, awards, and in particular, the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg for the Jerry Kaufman Kehilo Award, the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba for housing our awards, uh, the Housing at Winnipeg Foundation, and the Winnipeg chapter, the Canadian Friends of Hebrew U, and the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education. I also want to acknowledge this year we have one new award, the Gray Academy Leadership Award, and this award is awarded to a graduating student for leadership over high school in at least two or more areas. This morning, uh, we have one graduate who is not able to make it, but I want to note Nicole Aronson, and I would like to wish her mazel tov officially and, and have you join me to clap. Um, and now I would like to call up Mrs. White, and we will start with the diplomas. And a reminder to our grads, you're picking up your diploma here. Take off the sticky note for the photo, and you're coming up the stairs and going down the stairs. When your child is called up, and if you'd like to be the photographer of the family, there's a hula hoop to the left of Andrea. And uh, I think what is beautiful is to really celebrate all of the achievements and how special our graduates are. So every year, a number of teachers ask to have the privilege of coming up to read the grad bios, 
But as you can see, the uh, spritzing and the changing of the microphones and all of these pieces. So due to protocols, I get the privilege this year of reading all of the grad bios. So I'm very excited for this. We are going to begin with Jenna Buckwald. <laughs> Jenna's entire career as a student, from junior kindergarten to this day, has been within the walls of Gray Academy. Jenna has spent 15 years in this building and is proud to call herself a lifer. This morning, she was honored as the 2020 Hebrew valedictorian. Those of you that know Jenna know that music, singing, and dance are her passion. Throughout her years at Gray, she could be seen in every musical offered since she was in grade six. She played many lead roles, but remembers her role as Maisie in Susical, and You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, where she played Sally as being the best experiences. Jenna loved participating in the annual song festival, and one of her fondest memories was when she sang with her P2G delegations. Jenna, who had never been to Israel before, recalls that P2G was a trip of a lifetime. She states, being part of the culture as a whole and making so many new friends was impactful. She continued on to be the cultural chair on student council for two years following the trip. Jenna participated in almost everything Gray Academy had to offer, including but not limited to student ambassadorship, math contest, student council, and the Shema Choir, and has been on the honor roll in both general and Judaic studies every year. In the fall, Jenna will attend the University of Manitoba Asper School of Business. She received an academic entrance scholarship through the university. Today, Jenna is the recipient of the Gray Academy of Jewish Education Silver Medal, Jim Carr Member of Parliament Award, Joseph Ezra J. Cohen Baal Kriya Award, Leslie Ann Levy Corey Memorial Award, Naomi, Pans Naomi Polanski Community Leadership Award, Norman Marvin Satran Baal Midot Award, Excellence with Distinction in both General and Judaic Studies, Student Ambassador Recognition, and Lifer Recognition. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hannah Garber. Since entering Gray Academy, Hannah remembers with some guilt that she joined every library club in elementary to avoid going out for recess. In order to soothe her conscience, she still has every craft she made. She takes great care to act with integrity. Hannah is an enthusiastic sports fanatic and fierce competitor, participating in volleyball, ultimate, and her favorite, basketball, with her highlight being the grade eight zone championship. She was the varsity girls volleyball captain this year, recognizing her strong leadership abilities. These were also reflected in her leading role in BBYO over several years. She remembers case trips to Toronto and St. John as particular highlights. Hannah is a respected friend and confidant, recognized by several Menschlichkeit Awards, and she understands that her relationships have been the core of her experience at Gray. She will be entering sciences at U of M next year, and one day hopes to discover the perfect iced coffee recipe. Hannah is the recipient of the Carol Lesh Learning and Giving Award, the David Kaufman Award, the Philip and Miriam Maltz Award, the Paula and Rudy Lowenstein Award, the Michael Rosenberg Excellence in Female Varsity Basketball Award, Steinbach Credit Union Scholarship, Girls Varsity Volleyball Coaches Award. She received excellence with distinction in both general and Judaic studies and life recognition. Jordan Garber. Since junior kindergarten, Jordan believed that he would never accomplish anything greater than defeating Aaron to be king of recess football in grade six. That hasn't stopped him from trying. Jordan excels in golf, martial arts, basketball, and fitness training. He approaches his goals with determination and persistence, demonstrated by wearing shorts every day in high school. Jordan has a passion for basketball and has been part of three provincial championships 
and likely a fourth, but remembers being the MVP of the final game in grade nine as a highlight. Another was this year's brush with fame when he almost made the final cut to be an A&W commercial. Along the way, he has been recognized as a mensch for volunteering with children and seniors and being a good friend. Jordan combines interests in country music, the search for alien influences, the quest for the perfect burger, and the meaning of life in that order. He will enter the Asper School of Business in the fall and aspires to be an entrepreneur. Jordan is the recipient of the Bernice Manishin Feintuck Peer Tutoring Scholarship, Victor and Linda Hamovich Memorial Scholarship, the Michael Rosenberg Excellence in Male Varsity Basketball Award, Golf Coaches Award, Excellence with Distinction in General Studies, Excellence in Judaic Studies, and Life for Recognition. <laughs> Maria Gershwang. <clears throat> when Maria came to Gray in grade seven, she immediately found that the art room was where she would make her home away from home. She has a fond memory of being the balloon thief in the hotel on the grade nine Washington trip. She is generous and has spent a lot of time volunteering with seniors at the Tuxedo Seniors Living Center. Maria is a private person who takes pride in her self-sufficiency. This year, she has asserted herself with growing confidence and ease. Her real focus is art, storytelling, and fashion. There are many examples of Maria's work on the school's walls. She has excelled in artistic expression at Gray, but also as a professional artist while working online on a variety of commissions. Maria will attend the Ontario College of Art and Design at the University of Toronto next year in, the draw in drawing and painting, digital painting, and expanded animation program. She looks forward to living independently, being a freelance artist, and having more cats. Maria is the recipient of the Benny Rubin Artistic Award, the Sylvia Silverberg Scholarship, and has excellence in both general and Judaic studies. Shira Holt. Shira began Gray Academy in Hamora Carroll's junior kindergarten class. She, has old, she had older brothers in the school and is the last Holt to graduate. Shira recalls reading Harry Potter with Hamora Chris when she began to find her passion and enjoyment of reading, especially fiction. Her passions are playing video games, watching anime, and art. In Shira's ethical will, at the very end, she quotes Henry James, who said, three things in human life are important. The first is to be kind, the second is to be kind, and the third is to be kind. Being kind is who Shira is. As a friend, she is shown to be supportive, caring, and trustworthy. Shira's love for Camp Massad continued to grow from being a camper to a staff member. She states, Camp Massad is where I'm able to explore my love of arts and make lasting friendships. Shira received the Fernshana Rikus Literary Award and continues to write today. Her English teachers continue to be impressed by her creativity, courage, and growth in her writing. In the fall, Shira will attend the University of Winnipeg and study human rights. Shira is the recipient of the Mel Goldenberg Award for Excellence in Yiddish Language, the Sheldon Ogerman Writing Award, and Life for Recognition. <laughs> Bailey Hurtig. <laughs> Bailey's Gray Academy career began in junior kindergarten. In her ethical will, Bailey shares many memories throughout elementary and high school. She states that last year our grade got very close and I feel that we owe that to our school. If we went to any other school, I'm not sure our whole grade would be friends. Bailey's love for sports and involvement in extracurricular activities is apparent to anyone who knows her. Gymnastics, ultimate frisbee and BBYO to name a few. Her volleyball career, however, was short lived because the ball landed on my head more than in my hands. Bailey loves traveling. She hopes to continue traveling as she gets older. One of her best trips in high school was during P2G where she went to Israel with some of her friends. She recalls her first time camping with Sylvina and Avi, also known as the parents of the trip. It was so special because she slept facing the water next to a beach 
an experience she won't do again, but a memorable one. Bailey had her 17th birthday in Israel, and it made her trip even better. Next year, Bailey plans on attending the University of Winnipeg, where she will focus her studies on business and administration marketing. She received a U of W entrance scholarship. Bailey is a recipient of the Blanaru Family Most Improved Student Award in General Studies, the Class of 87 Award in Memory of Alana Dill, the Philip and Gertrude Wies Vice Award for Holocaust Awareness, the Naomi Polanski Community Leadership Award, Winnipeg Kiddish Palm Springs Scholarship. She has honor roll in general and Judaic studies and receives life for recognition. <clears throat> Yossi Jakobowitz. <laughs> Yossi was born in Cochabamba, Bolivia, and joined the Gray Academy family in 2007 for his junior kindergarten year. He arrived on the first day of school, as Yossi describes it, without a word of English and unable to even ask how to go to the bathroom. Yossi quickly was immersed and made new friends. As he says, it was all smooth sailing from there. One of his cherished memories from elementary school was how invested he and his friends were in their recess football games. Despite a few score debates, it showed Yossi the joy of sports and foreshadowed his athletic participation in high school. Yossi threw himself into athletics, taking an array of sports from badminton, volleyball, and basketball to ultimate frisbee. Yossi thrived with his sports experiences, but what really stood out for him was the fact that at Gray Academy, he could spread his wings. Yossi first placed the lead role in a musical at the age of 12 and continued to find opportunities in the arts as well as athletics. He joined the Neshema Choir and was the school newspaper journalist. He found that leadership roles like BBYO Regional Secretary and Treasurer and Student Council Treasurer allowed him to develop further. Yossi's experience with P2G and his time in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem stand out as the most pivotal, 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 <laughs> That's funny you get stuck on the easiest of words. <laughs> the most pivotal experience in high school for him. Next year, Yossi will be attending the University of Manitoba in the Department of Science. He says, I am passionate about my education and starting the next big step in my life, university. I want to meet new people, grow, try new things, and expand myself. Yossi is the recipient of the Gray Academy Leadership Award, receives excellence in Judaic studies, an honor roll in general studies, and life for recognition. <laughs> Anna Hosebachvili. <laughs> Anna was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. She came to Gray Academy in 2007 to start kindergarten. Anna's first day was memorable. She arrived as a shy, reserved kid who only knew four students. She made friends with her teachers and a gal and slowly expanded her circle over the next few years. Anna was the unintentional creator of the hat game, which took the playground by storm for years to come. In school, despite going three straight years without winning a single volleyball set, Anna still finds the silver lining. Anna loved playing sports like Ultimate from the very start of her time in high school. I was the only grade seven on a team full of grade eights, remembers Anna, and I was scared. I didn't think I'd fit in with the older students. Anna learned an important lesson about the power of teamwork and support in that experience. Anna loves soccer, volleyball, ultimate, and basketball. She had the opportunity to be the co-captain of the varsity girls volleyball team this year, which allowed her to help run practices and create clear communication lines. Anna worked hard as regional vice president of BBYO and as social chair of student council. Her dedication to these programs was recognized when Anna was awarded the Benai Brith Girls Leadership Award in 2019. Growing up in such a unique environment has brought me to where I am today, explains Anna. Experiences like P2G stand out for her because they not only showed her Israel in a new light, but allowed her to create deep bonds with the students she traveled with. Anna will be attending the Asper School of Business with an emphasis on marketing and communication. Through the university, she received the Benjamin and Sarah Sarner Award, George Finkel Memorial Scholastic Award, and the Israel and Babs Asper Memorial Award. Anna is a recipient of the David Merrick Award, the Heather Stephenson MLA Award, the William Kagan Grade 12 Female Athlete of the Year. She receives excellence in general studies, honor roll in Judaic studies, is receiving student ambassador recognition and LIFA recognition.
<laughs> Dylan Kagan. A gray lifer since junior kindergarten, Dylan has a traumatic memory of kindergarten when Yossi burst into tears because he thought Dylan looked scary. <laughs> Fortunately, Dylan did not stay scary to Yossi or any of his peers. Dylan is noted for his strong commitment to sport. He is dedicated to bringing sport to those less fortunate. He remains committed to fundraising initiatives to provide sport equipment to those who cannot otherwise afford it through a number of fundraising initiatives, all of his own accord. Dylan's impact on younger students is commendable. He coaches youth basketball and routinely reaches out to empower other students to find their voices and passions. Dylan notes in his ethical will that I realized early on in grade seven that I needed to find a passion and I find it through sports. Dylan's dedication to sport at Gray Academy continued through his role on our athletic council every year in high school. He helped organize numerous sporting events and helped to create new tournaments, including a middle years, middle years tournament bringing teams in from Northwestern Ontario and Winnipeg. At the end of every game or practice or any student event, you will always find Dylan staying behind to lend a helping hand. Dylan notes that in the past few months, with the extra time he spent at home, he had time to reflect on his time at Gray Academy and how special it truly was for him. I would like to add that through Gray Away, Dylan remained committed to our younger students with through FaceTime and texting some of our most isolated students. Dylan is attending the University of Manitoba and is going into the Asper School of Business. Outside of school, Dylan has received the McDonald's Leadership Scholarship. Dylan is the recipient of the Gray Academy of Jewish Education Gold Medal, the Nathan Daniel Pollock Memorial Scholarship, Top Marks Canada Scholarship for Citizenship, the William Kagan Grade 12 Male Athlete of the Year, Excellence in General Studies, Honor Roll in Judaic Studies, and Life for Recognition. <laughs> Max Kaplan. Woo! Max joined Gray Academy in junior kindergarten. He recalls that he had a nice teacher that was kind to him. Her name was Maura Jo, and Max liked her because she smiled often and just made him feel comfortable. Those of you that know Max know that he often likes to do his own thing. He isn't a follower doesn't succumb to peer pressure, and is an equal introvert as he is an extrovert, extrovert. Max's friends will say that he has a big heart, is kind to others, and will always have their back. Max's loyalty, loyalty to his friends is admirable. The thing about Max is that he does not always show how he truly, truly feels. He can be quiet and nonchalant, but he is always thinking and working. He chooses when to show his emotions, and when he does, it is truly worth the wait. Max does not judge others, and he never has. He does not gossip or speak poorly about his peers. Max loves playing video games, and although you, although you may not know this, Max is a very talented artist. His favorite high school memories by far were the grade nine Washington trip and the Jewish leadership class, where he states, I went to Dr. Kudin's and he shared a story with us that made us feel so at home and comfortable in his place. I remember thinking how cool it was that we were at our teacher's cottage on a weekend chilling. Max wants to thank all his friends for making high school memorable, as he says, high school wouldn't have been the same without you. Next year, Max will attend the University of Manitoba to study actuarial sciences and then continue his studies in the US. Max receives honor roll in general studies and life of recognition. <clears throat> Rudy Kissel. A gray lifer, Rudy is a critical link in the chain of this year's graduating class. Quiet, but essential. He enjoys hockey and art, is an accomplished pianist, and a computer programmer. Rudy is always doing the unexpected, seeing things differently and putting his own stamp on gray. He is known for his wit and occasionally going missing. Rudy enjoyed participating in basketball and volunteering for many activities. Everyone who needs help know that they can count on Rudy. He remembers the Harry Potter championship in grade four and unique moments like playing charades in Mr. Bedham's grade 10 French class or making music videos with Mr. Posen. Rudy is generous, always ready to help in unassuming ways. He notes in his ethical will that his relationships with his peers will last a lifetime. 
and that each of our unique personalities collided into one another into a crazy yet genuine friendship. Rudy plans to enter engineering at the University of Manitoba and would like to combine his love for hockey and programming by eventually working in game development. Rudy is the recipient of the Morris B. Rose Morantz Award and has received honor roll in both general and Judaic studies and life for recognition. With Eldar Kravitz, please come up. <laughs> Eldar came to Gray Academy in grade one and found it tough at first because it felt like everyone knew one another already. And as a recently arrived newcomer to Canada, it felt like a strange new land. Memories of elementary school are hazy, but Eldar slowly felt more and more part of his class. He loved recess football in grades four, five, and six. Looking back, Eldar notes that he and his classmates, all who believed that they were NFL bound, spent 70% 70, 70 of the time arguing about scores and plays. Looking back at high school, Eldar felt that travel was one of the highlights for him, like the grade nine Washington trip, retreats, and P2G. Being able to spend time with his classmates and build memories all together was deeply meaningful. It also made Eldar stop to realize the value of self. When he finally felt part of a tightly knit group that he understood the importance of accepting and valuing yourself. Being part of a group only matters if you can also stand tall on your own. Athletics were an integral part of Eldar's high school experience. With his teammates, Eldar won provincial championships. Twice, he was singled out as the provincial finals, finals player of the game. Eldar worked hard to share his love of sports with others. He helped coach middle school and community teams and organized and volunteered at tournaments. He acted as a referee when we hosted tournaments and worked with Rady Day Camp, Junior Bisons, and Mayhem Basketball Clubs. Eldar would like to join the IDF, preferably in the Air Force. His future holds many opportunities, but he is starting at the University of Manitoba to study engineering. Today, Eldar is the recipient of the David Merrick Memorial Award, the Hebrew University Award, the Rebecca Schwartz Memorial Award. He's receiving honor roll in both general and Judaic studies, as well as life of recognition. <laughs> Heli Manoff. Kelly recalls her first day of Gray One at Gray Academy. She remembers driving to school and feeling very nervous. She had just emigrated to Canada from Israel and she didn't even know one word of English. Even though she missed Israel, she felt that Gray Academy filled the missing piece and gave her a sense of community and belonging. One of her fondest memories was the grade nine Washington trip. She recalls having so much fun with her friends and learning about independence. She enjoyed the incredible opportunities and was impacted by the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. She says, it was such an amazing opportunity that I will remember the rest of my life. Helly is passionate about dance. She took dance from the age of three to grade 10. She states, going to dance was something I used to enjoy so greatly. It was my passion as a child. She recalls being invited to do competitive dance in grade nine, winning gold at the Canadian National Jam Dance Championships. Helly is also passionate about traveling and learning about different cultures. But she states that one of her biggest passions is fashion. I love to see the different new trends every year and see how fashion is evolving through time. I feel like what a person wears is one of the best ways that a person can truly express themselves. Next year, Heli plans to attend the Asper School of Business at the University of Manitoba. Her goal is to major in finance or actuarial mathematics. She hopes to someday move to Toronto or to get a job internship in the United States. Today, Heli is the recipient of the Cates Family Memorial Scholarship, the Morris Manuk and Lillian Manuk Scholarship, excellence in both general studies and excellence with distinction in Judaic studies and life for recognition. Mitchell Margulis. Woo! Mitchell recounts, 
There is no greater thing in life than trying something new and going out of your comfort zone. That is why I've opted for the mindset of taking leaps of faith, whether it be clearing my mind off before cliff jumping or sparking a conversation with someone I've never met before. I feel drawn to the unknown. Mitchell's words effectively summarized his experiences at Gray. Helen Keller said that life is e either a daring adventure or nothing at all, and Mitchell was never one to back away from a challenge except for the time that he was convinced in elementary school by older students that were ghosts in the basement and under the manhole near the play structure. In that case, Mitchell was perfectly happy leaving well enough alone. From being a national level public speaker and debating to winning provincial basketball championships, when Mitchell sets his mind to something, there's very little that will stand in his way. One thing you may not know about Mitchell is that he left Gray Academy for a couple of years but reflects that returning to Gray Academy was the best decision he made in his life. This morning, he was honored as the 2020 English valedictorian, and he notes in his ethical will that Gray Academy has molded me into the person I am today. P2G was another fundamental experience that Mitchell cherishes. He recalls when he and some other people on the delegation had a group ice bath. Considering the heat we've had in Winnipeg lately, that would likely be quite refreshing. Mitchell looks forward to attending Queen's University to study commerce. He is the second Gray Academy student to be the recipient of the prestigious Queen's Chancellor Scholarship, recognizing academics along with creative and original thinking with demonstrated leadership qualities. Today, Mitchell is a recipient of the Barbara and Raymond Kivas Debating Scholarship Award, the Sydney and Pearl Morantz Family Award, he has received excellence in general studies and honor roll in Judaic studies. Jacob Marks. Born in Edmonton, Jacob joined his class in grade four. He remembers elementary school's big celebrations like the grade six Shabbaton and farewell, as well as the joys of recess football. To appreciate how rich and diverse Jacob's interests and talents are, look no further than the activities he took part in during his time at Gray Academy. He was an integral part of the highly successful reach for the top team, played basketball, then helped out on the athletic council and acted as P2G chair. Outside of school, he was the BBYO regional mora. He volunteers at Winnipeg Harvest and is completing his Duke of Edinburgh award requirements. Jacob also earned his national lifeguard certification. He works as a lifeguard and swimming instructor. Jacob feels like his time at Gray Academy has helped him develop into a proud and confident Jew. It has fed his love of biology, trivia, and making meaningful changes to the world and challenged him to push himself out of his comfort zone. Jewish programming and education were some of the highlights for Jacob's time in high school, with experiences at retreats and P2G having lasting impacts. He feels deep gratitude and passion for the school in allowing him to explore and develop so much, both as a learner and as a person. Next year, Jacob will be studying in the Bachelor of Science program at the University of Manitoba with an aim to continue his education afterwards in the field of medicine. Through the U of M, he received the Girton Centennial Entrance Scholarship. Jacob is a recipient of the Jerry Kaufman Kahila Award, the Gray Academy Vision of Achievement Award, the Harry Dayan Bial Tfila Award, the Top Mark Scholarship for School Pride, Reach for the Top Recognition, Student Ambassador Recognition, and receives excellence in general and Judaic studies. <laughs> Maya Polavoy. <laughs> Born in Israel, Maya joined Gray Academy in grade three in 2010 without a word of English. When Mr. Paul asked her what her name was, she stared at him blankly, having no clue what had just been asked. Maya was worried about how she would fit in, but soon discovered she was welcomed with open arms and quickly invited, and was quickly invited into games her classmates were playing. These recess games are a strong memory for Maya. She and her friends would come up with creative adventures and challenges, one of which resulted in the entire group taking off their shoes to throw them at a tree. Maya has been an integral part of Gray Academy's debate and public speaking programs. With her successes in this, she has traveled to Boston, Toronto, and Halifax. She represented Manitoba in the national championships. 
In addition, Maya has also served as chair for a multitude of committees on student council. She has acted as a student ambassador to build meaningful connections to the school. Outside of school, Maya's passion for dance allowed her to take part in the Sarah Summer High Folk Ensemble. Although she has retired from competitive dance, Maya continues to find avenues to share her passion for the art form with others. She was part of a Chai and Rizalka dance tour performing in Israel and Ukraine. And the summer prior to that, she traveled to California to compete in the JCC Maccabi Games. Maya's advice to all younger students comes from her own vast experiences at the school. Take on every opportunity. Although she notes that punctuality was not a strength, she is the first one to speak about the importance of showing up and that it is never too late to do so. It's the experience you gain that is important, not the results. Next year, Maya will be attending the University of Manitoba in the Faculty of Science. Maya is the recipient of the Barry Bender Award, the University of Manitoba Chown Entrance Scholarship, the Ethel and William Velvel Kozak Scholarship, the Evelyn and Benny Raymond Scholarship, the Laurie Schenkelo Scholarship, the Philip and Miriam Maltz Award, the Rachel and Dove Eisenstadt Memorial Award, the Ron Silver Award, the Rose and Louis Gunn Bursary, receives excellence with distinction in both general and Judaic studies and student ambassador recognition. <laughs> Daphne Rosenberg. Daphne became a member of the Gray Academy class in 2018 for grade 11 as an international student. She's from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. She made a smooth and seamless transition to our school, making many friends, volunteering in and outside the community, as well as joining extracurricular activities. While she misses her family, Winnipeg has become a home away for her. She is thrilled she made this decision to study abroad and is proud of herself for taking such a risk. She is lucky to have a second family in her host family, the Pauls. Her fondest memories in Winnipeg are taking camping trips with her host family. Daphne's volunteer experience is extensive both in Brazil and here. She began volunteering within the first few weeks of her grade 11 year. Every Tuesday, she volunteered for Operation Ezra, an organization through the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg that helps Yazidi refugees learn English. Her role was to support the children by creating art activities, making them laugh and feel comfortable. Daphne volunteered at Lamoud, Spirit Weekends, and the Simpkins Center. She was always available to help teachers, friends, and students in a time of need. Daphne is passionate about math and science. She loves a new challenge because she states, I can use calculations and logic. I love how I can relate the different sciences together and how they are all connected. Daphne is brave in many ways. She moved across the world to a new school, spoke a different language, and did it all with confidence and stride. Next year, Daphne plans to attend the University of Alberta to study computer engineering. She received the U of A's Maple Leaf First Year Excellence Scholarship, an International Student Scholarship, and, international, and an International Entrance Scholarship, and the Faculty of Engineering Iron Standard Entrance Scholarship. Today, Daphne is a recipient of Counselor Kevin Klein Leadership Award, the Dora and Albert Diamond Memorial Scholarship, the Ron Silver Award, and is receiving excellence with distinction in both general and Judaic studies. <laughs> Liat Schultz. Liat started at Gray Academy in junior kindergarten. She remembers becoming friends with Ruth. She learned of the perils of recess arguments and unrequited love, all the while reveling in grade-wide games of Red Rover. In grade nine, Liat made changes in what she wanted from herself and her life. She joined the Neshema Choir, was the vice president and president of her BBYO chapter, volunteered at Eights Heim, played ultimate in basketball, and was the first hand in the air for any volunteer opportunities. She was committee chair, secretary, and finally president of the school student council. Liat also took part in P2G, an experience which greatly enriched her life. She also identified needs, such as a positive exam week stress reliever, and created a program to allow dogs to visit students as they studied at school to help them manage their worries. 
Liad reached out to an Indigenous program to bring those moose hide pins to her peers as a way to bring attention to murdered and missing Indigenous women. She did all of this while maintaining strong academic standing. It is no surprise then why she has earned the U of M's BMO Leader of Tomorrow Award. Liat is passionate about the environment, travel, and wellness. She treasures education and challenges herself to keep growing as a person. At Gray Academy, she found a place to do this. She says, the school is a home. It is an experience, it is an opportunity. Liat knows the importance of loving what you do and doing what you love. Next year, Liat will be attending the University of Manitoba in the Faculty of Kinesiology with hopes to become a physiotherapist. Today, Liat is our recipient of the Governor General's Award. Along with the Harvey and Sima K Scholarship, the Meyer and Rosalind Silver Award, the Nathan Daniel Pollock Memorial Scholarship, the Richard Tapper Memorial Award, the Ron Silver Award, the Sharon Scheinwald Scholarship, the Tom Blair Award, the William Kagan Grade 12 Female Athlete of the Year Award. She is receiving excellence with distinction in both general and Judaic studies and receiving student ambassador recognition and lifer recognition. <clears throat> Ruth Sayum. Ruth began at Gray Academy in kindergarten. She became fast friends with many classmates who remain important parts of her life. Elementary school held many wonderful memories and the foundation of friendships which still thrive today. Ruth's short-lived time playing basketball taught her an important life lesson. Take advantage of opportunities presented to you so you have no regrets. Lost games and missed shots come and go, but the memories you make as you grow and strive as a team are well worth it. Although Ruth continued to play badminton in her senior year, she focused most of her energy on experiences which would feed her passion for politics, human rights, and helping people. Ruth threw herself into challenging programs such as serving as a page for City Hall in grade 11, CJ PAC, Student Council Committee Chair and Treasurer, her internship at the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg, and Reach for the Top. She took part in choir, was yearbook chair, volunteered in the art room, and was a member of the youth program Continuity Think Tank. Ruth is passionate about arts, human rights, and global politics. She loves to paint and enjoys philosophy. She would like to become an aerospace or human rights lawyer. These might seem like two divergent fields, but as Ruth explains it, in the future, people might want to explore space a lot more, which may pose a few legal issues. Even looking at the stars, Ruth's critical lens sees the possibilities and challenges our future as humanity could hold. One of Ruth's most cherished memories of her time as a student was driving all over the city with Maya trying to find the perfect prizes to get her peers excited about student council programming and finding ways to enrich the experiences of all her classmates through her work with student council. Next year, Ruth will be attending McGill University to study political sciences. Today, Ruth is a recipient of the Blanaru Family Most Improved Student Award in Judaic Studies, the Elaine and Alan Shinfield and Family Scholarship, the Kovetsky Peer Nominated Award, the Paula and Rudy Lowenstein Award, the Rabbi Kravitz Award. She receives excellence in Judaic Studies, honor roll in General Studies, is a student ambassador, and receiving a life of recognition. Joey Smolik. <laughs> Joey came to Gray in grade three and remembers grade six Shabbaton as a turning point where he connected with classmates and branched out socially. Similarly, he recalls retreat and spirit weekends as time to enjoy the company of friends and deepen relationships. The grade nine Washington trip was another experience which has left a lasting impression. Joey notes in his ethical will that being at Gray Academy gave me the space to be creative and do my own thing, and this will shape my life from this point on. I want to thank all of my teachers and friends for being a family and for always being supportive. Joey is an entrepreneur. He enjoys marketing, network, and schmoozing. He is interested in all things financial. 
Joey is involved in the rap music industry as an artist manager and enjoys the fast-paced creative energy. Joey is active, enjoying basketball, tennis, and swimming, but mostly enjoys the company of friends and informal fun. He plans to take a year away from school to expand his presence on YouTube and to further his many business interests. He is opening up a clothing store on August 1st called Bape Club, based on a Japanese brand, along with managing our very own Kid Foster with his album coming out this fall and helping other local artists with their online marketing. Good luck and mazel tov, Joey. Josh Stoller. Josh is a gray lifer, having entered gray in junior kindergarten. He has many years of significant memories, but fondly remembers the grade five Harlem Shake video made in Miss Leipzig's class, and ruefully notes he was a better dancer then, and it's just funny to be reminded whenever re-watching the video. Josh is a sports fanatic. He is an extreme fan, particularly of the Jets, but more than that, he is a devoted participant. Basketball in particular has been a crucial part of high school for Josh. He and his cohort won three consecutive provincial championships and a presumptive fourth year, and he is proud of the last game in his own finals where he played his best game ever. He values the many adventures and relationships related to basketball as formative. Josh enjoys working with children at the Rady JCC and BB camp and has been a leader and mentor and finds it rewarding to make them smile. He knows that the friendships from his years at Gray will be the foundation for a net network to last a lifetime. Next year, Josh will attend the Asper School of Business and looks forward to continuing to spend time with the boys. He has received a U of M entrance scholarship. Today, Josh is the recipient of the Shelley Weiss Memorial Scholarship, the Morris Goldenberg Scholarship, receives excellence in both general and Judaic studies, and life for recognition. Aaron Thomas. Aaron began gray in grade one. A compelling impression of elementary school for Aaron was that it was too cold in the winter to go out for recess. He believes he will never make peace with winter. It is said, still waters run deep, and Aaron is a perfect example. He loves basketball and pursued it with single-minded devotion through high school. He has a string of provincial championships and MVP awards to attest to his skills and love of the sport. But he also knows that basketball is a form of expression and not the only one. In the last year or so, he has focused on another, music, and with this familiar drive has made great progress in reaching his goal of being a performer. His original music can be found on YouTube. Aaron doesn't point to many specific memories of Gray, but to the, needs, but to the need to integrate experiences and move forward. He notes that the Washington trip was when the class felt like a family. He knows the next few years are important and feels confident he will be ready for opportunities as they appear. Aaron reflects that his last year in high school flew by in a flash. He notes that, looking back on my last 12 years here, I'm thankful for it all. I'm thankful for you all. Each and every person that I've shared this journey with has affected me in some way, whether they know it or not. As we move on to the next chapter of our lives, it's important that we cherish our last moments together. Thank you guys and thank you, Gray Academy. Aaron will attend the Asper School of Business next fall and wants to be open to possibilities. Clearly, his thoughtful and quiet determination will lead to success on his own terms. Today, Aaron is the recipient of the Elaine and Alan Shinfield and Family Scholarship, Varsity Basketball Most Valuable Player, Gray Academy Peer Tutoring Award, Honor Roll in both General and Judaic Studies, and Life for Recognition. I have to share that this was the most amazing thing anybody could do is get up here and read these bios to you all. Thank you for the privilege of being able to do this. Thank you. This was awesome. So I would like all our graduates to stand because those of you who weren't able to see live the bios in the first half, but can I get the graduating class of 2020 to please rise? To those of you, yes, please clap. <laughs> to
To our graduates who just received their diplomas, you can now flip your tassel. And I'm going to have you stay seated. We're not going to throw the caps just yet because we've got a little, be a little bit uh, choreographed. So have a seat, everyone. Have a seat. I'm going to do uh, some quick thank yous. I don't have to, to rush as much as we did in the last uh, bit, but it is getting a little warm outside. So on your way out, please uh, help yourself to refreshments. And also, you're going to get a special cookie with the Gray Academy logo on it as well on your way out. So again, I know that Tracy has mentioned some thank yous, but I once again want to thank all of the staff who made today possible, uh, the entire leadership team, and specifically to Tracy and to Joyce and Ira, who's here today, and Ruth and Judy and Andrea, um, and all our staff who wrote the bios. and all of our staff who contribute to making a Gray Academy experience possible. Please join me in thanking them once again. And thank you, Shayla, for being here on keyboard. I'm going to give you a cue in just a minute or two so that you can uh, head to the keyboard shortly for the recessional. In the back of your program, there is a long list of acknowledgments and thank yous. This includes many of our parent volunteers to the families who supported the graduation today. Uh, all families contributed, and we had a few families who contributed to our hydration station and being able to go live. So thank you to all of you, as well as the acknowledgments of all of our awards. So please um, look to the back of your program. And again, I want to thank Mrs. White one more time. Um, yes, please join me. OK, wonderful. I don't think I need to add many words to the standing ovation by your graduating class that you've been with for five years. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, and I'll say it again, um, you know, <laughs> we've put on, I used, in, in comedy, I'm calling them dog and pony shows. Every time we've had to re-envision something, we call it a dog and pony show. We re-envision grade six farewell. We re-envision kindergarten Shabbat. We re-envision, what else do we need? Chagigat Hasidur online. Uh, we had our lunch online. We had, uh, what else, Pesach online. Kabbalat Shabbat online. We re-envision everything. <laughs> classes, yeah, f never mind classes online from 10 till three every day. Um, so to be able to envision this, um, to be able to, thankfully we all live in Manitoba, so let's be grateful for living in the province of Manitoba and the wonderful health that we've had over the last 12 days. And at one o'clock, we'll hopefully see if we've made it to day 13, but I'm grateful to live here in Manitoba and that we were able to come together outside and that the weather was so beautiful and that you were all able to join us today. And also, <coughs> thank you for your patience in knowing that you couldn't be here for the whole thing, but as I said, you will get the recording. Between all of our graduates, our community is in amazing hands for the future. And that is true of many of our alumni who continue to contribute throughout. As I said earlier, I'm gonna just sneak in some water. It's just, as we sit and look at the school building, we're usually at Eitz Chaim or Sheriz Etik. Um, to our students, I'm gonna, I'm going to invite you to take a look at the school for a minute. And I'm going to invite you to just think about the memories you had inside to the left in the elementary, <clears throat> to the right in the high school, out here on the hardtop, on the playground, in the parking lot. I invite the parents to do the same. There are some pretty amazing memories over your 14 or 15 years. And at the same time, we all have learned that school is not a building, and it is not a physical entity, but it is what is in the heart and the community. And I'm so excited for the graduating class of 2020 uh, because I know firsthand, and I know Daniel's here from the class of 91, that, and those of you who are connected to your classes, that bond never breaks. Even you might be distant in space or time, you may not have seen each other for years, but I can tell you that you will be there for each other in the hard times. You will be there to celebrate each other. And you will look back on this, some of you in your degrees as lawyers, as business people, perhaps in medicine, and we're all going to look back at this time of a global pandemic, knowing how strong and resilient you were. And I think those characteristics 
are going to serve you incredibly well into your future. So with that, Shayla, I'm going to invite you to the keyboard. We're going to first do the, the hat tossing, and I hope everyone did label your hats. So we don't have, some of you are in higher locations in the tent than others, uh, but we're going to do this uh, from your sitting position. And Robin and Andrea, do you want to find a place where you might catch this? We're going to do the three, I'm going to count down, so don't do it yet, but those of you wearing bobby pins, um, you may want to remove the bobby pins. And uh, you know, whoever gets the best shot, if you're a parent and you got an amazing shot, then send it to us. Okay, so officially, I would like to congratulate the graduating class of Gray Academy, class of 2020. I see even Yossi's got his camera ready, so you're going to have camera on one hand, and I'm going to count down to three, two, one, but not yet. I would like you to throw your caps in the air, being so proud of your hard work to reach this moment and to usher you in into the next stage of your life. Three, two, one. Mazel tov! Okay. <laughs> so before you move, before you move graduates, go find your hat, go pick it up. And uh, guests, please stay seated. We're going to do a celebratory recessional. Um, after that, each of you are going to, uh, again, be welcomed to get hydration. Um, on your way out, as well as the special cookie. I want to thank you so much for coming together today and celebrating. Um, so with that, graduates, we're going to do our recessional. Shayla, hit it. All right, Maria, Jordan. 